Welcome to the wilds, a safe haven for endangered animals, a place where their dwindling numbers can be replenished. Located three and a half hours south of Youngstown near Zanesville, the wild spans 14 square miles with 150 glimmering lakes and ponds. It is the largest conservation and resource center in North America and is home to some of the rarest wildlife on Earth. We could easily see in our lifetime a time when the large wildlife that we've grown up to know could vanish from Earth. Uh, we are losing worldwide about three species a day to extinction. For years, Ohio Zoo directors had asked for a place where they could work to change this, a place for the research and breeding of endangered animals. In 1986, a gift of 10,000 acres from the Ohio Power Company allowed the Wilds Project to move forward. The donated land had been surface mined for coal, then as state law requires, reclaimed, put back as closely as possible to its natural landscape. Today, Big Muskie sits idle in the distance, a reminder of the wild's very existence. Years ago, buffalo, bears, timber wolves, and elk roamed this land. Then came the Native Americans, the settlers, the industrial age with the coal mining machines, and now, once again, wildlife. When you think about it, it's really the most comprehensive recycling program of its kind. Alan Hamilton is the overseer of the wilds. He came here after 25 years with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. We've uh, had a lot of visitors here that's been in Africa, and they tell us how much uh, this actually reminds them of Africa. And then when we go through uh, the gate here, uh, then you get into actually what looks like uh, North America. It is in this area where you might catch a glimpse of beaver, deer, Canada geese, or trumpeter or tundra swan. The Wilds is also working to preserve the wetlands, hoping to attract vanishing wildlife like the sandhill crane. Well, the wetland uh, to some people are no more than a swamp, but what you see here uh, without the wetlands, uh, there's some species uh, here in the state of Ohio that's going to become extinct. Wow. With much of the land still undeveloped, traveling through the outback is not easy. At the top of a ridge, we look out to a spectacular yet eerie sight. Through the trees, silhouettes of giraffes and common eland, seemingly unconfined, roaming the Ohio wilderness. The view of the wilds in the early morning hours is breathtaking. The fog lingers across the landscape like a scene from Jurassic Park. Inside, scimitar-horned oryx graze by a lake. Hartman and zebra play a game of tag, while a family of sable antelope watch the rising sun. Mark Jacobs and Patty Glaze are up early to feed the animals. They start in the 50-acre Asian section. Grazing isn't as good this time of year. The grass is coarse, not as sweet. Uh, this is a, a grain-based, alfalfa-based uh, pellet that's uh, supplemented with minerals and vitamins and things. So it's a pretty good balanced diet for them. There are only a couple hundred of these Bactrian camels left. A family of three lives here, the baby born last spring. This double humped camel comes from Mongolia and will do well in any harsh Ohio winter. The Shabalski horses come from the same region of Asia. They have virtually disappeared from the wild. You can see the body conditions real good. The feeding truck moves through the fence of plastic hose and wire into the 150-acre African area. Come on, Lucy. Come on, Mom. The Wilds is home to five southern white rhinos. While they are hunted in Africa for their horns, the reticulated giraffes with their gentle eyes and delicate figures are hunted for their hides and their tendons, which are used for musical instruments. The criteria for choosing an animal isn't which would the public like to see most, but which are most in danger of becoming extinct, which would benefit most from an environment like the wilds. Dr. Evan Bloomer is one of the top veterinarians in his field. He decided to come to Southeast Ohio because of the potential. What we are is essentially a savings account. We are the bank where these animals are being maintained almost like Noah's Ark, if you will. Uh, for some journey through an adversity. Bloomer explains that development has forced wildlife into small isolated islands. Because they are unable to migrate, there is inbreeding and disease. Here, an international species survival plan monitors the bloodlines to get the most healthy offspring. 
The purpose isn't just to have babies, it's to have the right babies, to maintain certain genetic lines, to maintain them, you know, to make sure we have certain numbers of animals at different ages at different times. And the animals here at the wilds could become the recipients of some of the most advanced research in infertility, including the use of frozen embryos. Uh, so what we hope to do is to be able to build reproductive technology that will allow us to take embryos that are conceived here at the wild in our population and be able to ultimately freeze them and fly them to Africa and impregnate females of the same species in Africa and have natural born offspring from that process. A process that could mean new life and new hope. Atop a hill on the 10,000 acre preserve sits the Wilds Visitor Center. Below nearly 200 animals coming from zoos around the country roam inside a 20 mile double fence system. We find that when they first come on here that they oftentimes will gravitate towards fences and stay near fences and not go out into all of this landscape because they're used to fences. That's where they've grown up. That's where they've lived. The only animals actually kept in confined areas are the North American red wolves. These two have been paired for breeding. Wolves have the reputation of being aggressive animals, but, but generally they're really not. Uh, they're kind of secretive and skittish. Our tour of the wilds includes several close encounters. This is, uh, this is our Bacterine camel up close and personal, coming over to see what all the excitement is about. And Raul, as he's called, took an immediate liking to our truck. When you take a safari through the wilds, you're not allowed out of the safari bus. These are wild animals, and they will charge if they feel threatened. Today, though, they seemed more curious than anything. On this day, a group of children from a local school has arrived. In fact, the Wilds is setting up educational programs with school systems around the state. The kids uh, in, in many schools and through their parents are very aware, and through, I think, uh, television programs too, are very aware of uh, the natural world and uh, African animals. And even though there is no money for advertising, this summer alone 40,000 people visited the wilds. I'm speechless. It was so great. And I think it was a fantastic experience to just mingle with the animals. That giraffe is unbelievable. He just stood right in the road, right in our way. And when he was ready to move, he moved. The Wilds Project was developed for animals, not as a tourist attraction. But ironically, in order for it to survive, it needs people to finance it. That's why future plans call for cabins, a lodge, and even a safari campground. Picture yourself crawling out of your tent at daylight, uh, walking over here at the edge, watching the sun rise over that hill, uh, shining and glimmering off the lake, and looking off into the pasture fields seeing no signs of human, but seeing several species of African animals grazing there. And even next spring, the wilds will look very different, with plans for an elephant section and several animal management areas, including one for up to 40 rhinos. At sunset, the wilds may be the most memorable. The sinking sun looks like fire in the sky, perhaps a subtle warning from beyond. We're told these animals are disappearing at a rate unmatched in human history. And even if the Wilds is able to reverse their fate, there is no place to return them to. The circumstances that have pushed them to the edge of extinction still exist. <laughs>